So, many people have asked me, what's it like being Hispanic or Latino in Japan or Japon? However way you want to say it. But anyway, let's talk about that. Well, guys, before I get dig into this video and talk about what it's like to be Hispanic or Latino in Japan, I'm going to tell you a few things first. First off, this is based... Well, what I'm about to say is based on my personal experience. And please don't take it to heart because everyone's experience is different. I'm not saying other experiences are invalid, but I'm just talking from my own personal perspective. And second off, please be respectful. Anyway, let's continue. First off, I'm going to talk about my life here in Japan. I've been living in Japan for three years. And, you know... The culture I'm mainly going to be focusing on from my perspective is Mexican-American, uh, Mexican, so I can't really speak for all Latinos, okay? And also, mi español es no bueno. My Spanish is not that great, so be aware of that too. I mean, it's okay. I could speak and read Spanish very well, but yeah, my speaking is, uh, es muy gringo, very gringo. It's not that good. But anyway, guys, besides that, let's talk about my moving experience here in Japan. Yeah, Japan. So first, when I first came to Japan, a lot of Japanese people weren't hif weren't even familiar with Hispanics and Latinos too much. They're really not. Or when they do think of Mexicans, they think of tacos, which is pretty common. I gotta understand why. But yeah, <laughs> the best way to explain it is that Japan is not really familiar with other cultures. So when they think of Mexicans, they think of a stereotypical way, which is like tacos and burritos. And yeah, stuff like that. That's a simple way to put it. But I can say that depending where you live in Japan, your experience will vary. For example, when I first moved to Japan, I lived in a city called Kanagawa. And to be honest, you know, there's a lot of foreigners there. So Japanese people are pretty much more exposed to that. I mean, they had some Tex-Mex food that wasn't too far away from where I lived in, you know, Kanagawa. And yeah, a few other things. Ah, oh, there's a bug. Yeah. But besides that, you know, and I noticed I messed up on my shaving. But anyway, that's besides the point. Yeah, when I left Kanagawa, I went to a place called Toyohashi which is in Aichi Prefecture. And this place was pretty unique because if you live in Toyohashi, between Toyota and Toyohashi, there's a lot of Brazilian people and Peruvians. Yeah, Brazilians and Peruvians. And a lot of them are half. So anyway, you know, when I first moved to Toyohashi, a lot of Japanese people will say Brazilian or Perugian. One of those two. I don't know if I said that one right. But anyway, they will assume I'm from Brazil or Peru. And I thought that was interesting because I was like, wow, that's the first time I ever experienced that in Japan to be considered Brazilian or Peruvian first. And I never thought about that because I was like, huh, I'm pretty sure people from those parts of Latin America probably have much more darker skinned people. Maybe I could be wrong or biased. I'm not too familiar with all of Latin America. So please forgive me on this, please. Anyway. Not only were Japanese people calling me Brazilian and whatnot, but also Brazilian people. So they'll speak to me in Portuguese. I'll be like, no hablas portugues? Lo siento, amigo. So yeah, they would look at me kind of weird. Then they would speak to me in Spanish and they'll be like, oh, I know what you said in Spanish. I'm going to respond in English. And then they'll get super confused. They're like, okay, where's this guy from? <laughs> so <laughs> that happened to me in Japan. It, it's It's pretty funny. But yeah, you know, to... For Brazilian people to consider me uh, Brazilian or they think I'm from Brazil, it was interesting. And the reason why I saw so much Brazilians in Toyohashi is because there's like a visa program, I guess. Or like if you have like Japanese family, you could come and live and work in Japan. So that's how a lot of Brazilians and Peruvians come here. It's interesting. Yeah, and I was very impressed at how good Brazilians speak English because they think they're bad at English, but no. You guys speak English pretty good. It it impresses me. <laughs> but anyway, 
I remember taking a driving test and I remember seeing nothing but Brazilians and Vietnamese people and Filipinos, but mainly Brazilians. That, that was the number one thing. Like, oh my God, there's a lot of them. Jesus Christ. I felt like I wasn't even in Japan anymore. So yeah, you know, that's one of my experiences. The next is when I went to a place in Hamamatsu and I believe the place is called Iwata. I could be wrong. But anyway, in this place called Iwata, I remember I had Brazilian students and they had a place called King Churros. And I tripped out on that, you know, because uh, there was a bunch of Brazilian people again. And even a lot of my students were from Brazil. I remember one of them was Julio, but in Japan, they kept on calling him Julio. And he got so confused by me. I was like, Julio, hey, Julio, how are you? And then you look at me and we were like, why are you calling me Julio? It's, it's, it's Julio. So that was, that was pretty interesting. But yeah, you know, it's just the surprise, you know, that I had Brazilian students. It just felt weird because I'll have like my Japanese students and my Brazilian students. I'll be like, man, <laughs> I don't think Japanese people will recognize us. They'll probably think I'm Brazilian. And a lot of the students did think I was Brazilian. A lot of them. Because when I worked at Hamamatsu, I remind you, uh, a lot of the teachers there, I'm not saying all the teachers. Actually, one of the teachers actually had darker hair, but he kind of blonded. He dyed his hair blonde a bit. But yeah, a lot of the teachers there had like blonde hair. One of them had gray hair. And yeah, I was the only one with like darker hair at the time. So they had red hair, blonde hair. So yeah, when they looked at me, they're like, oh, Brazilian. His eyes are dark. I don't have any colored eyes. You know, my hair is dark. And it was just interesting. <laughs> Some of the students would think that way. But yeah, I'll tell the students where I'm from, what I do. And it was interesting because I made the students churros there. I taught them how to make uh, cinnamon toast. It's just like, yeah, basic cinnamon toast. And yeah, I made them, uh, what else? I also made them Mexican hot chocolate. And they never had that. And to see the kids go, oh, oishi. Oishi means delicious or delicioso, you know, if you speak Spanish. But yeah, it was interesting. So that's my experience, you know. Now that I live in Osaka, here's another experience I found super freaking interesting. And I hope Hispanics and Latinos, especially Mexicanos or Chicanos, feel the same way as I do. But please listen, okay? Please listen on this. So in Japan, um, especially Osaka, there was something interesting I started to notice. I remember going to a Mexican restaurant because one time... The guy I regularly go to was closed because he closed early on Sundays. I went to this place called Katina Rima. So Katina Rima is really pretty good Mexican food place. I mean, I liked it. The guy was Japanese. But the way, the thing I was impressed with him is that he loves Chicano culture. And I bought one of his hot sauces there, which you can see here. And that guy surprised me. <laughs> Because I ordered, I could order food in Spanish, you know. I mean, like I said, my Spanish is not that shitty, but I could order in Spanish. So anyway, you know, I'm ordering and I'm just surprised because he really loves Chicano culture. And like when I saw his hot sauce, because he served me this hot sauce when I was eating in his restaurant, I was like, this hot sauce is fucking delicious. And I was so impressed. Honestly, I'm impressed. Like Japanese people, a lot of people in Osaka love Chicano culture and I'm hoping like a lot of Hispanics and Latinos or Chicanos when they come to Japan they don't feel like Japanese people are disrespecting them uh, as someone who probably doesn't dress to look or have the tattoos etc I respect it because in Japan they love it so much like they adopted it as part of that part of their identity you know and I think if Chicanos come up here and they just give Japanese people a chance you got to would love the way they respect the culture. Like they do it so much. If they feel like they disrespect for, they disrespected you, they will feel so bad. And honestly, I'm impressed. Like it brings like tears to my eyes to see that. I was like, wow, you guys actually love our culture. <laughs> to see Japanese people do that, like in person, like not something you see on a documentary and all that, but to see them have their hot sauce, like have hot sauce like this and just representing Chicano culture fascinating and i can never forget that restaurant katina rima i mean it's delicious i mean the hot sauce was delicious i loved everything about the guy he really truly in his heart loved chicano culture and he'll tell me that so much 
in both English, Japanese, Spanish. And I'm just hoping if a lot of Mexicans or Chicanos get the chance to visit Japan, please don't see it as disrespectful. See it as them trying to understand another culture. Give them a reason to understand respectfully and you'll open their mind. Seriously, you know, I mean, that's what I'm noticing here in Japan. Like, depending where you go, some of them are so familiar with Chicano culture. They want to talk to you. They want to understand you. And don't take it as annoying. Maybe, you know, maybe if you're eating, that's annoying. But if you get the chance to talk to a Japanese person who loves Chicano culture, enjoy it, man. Because these people put their heart and dedication to show that they enjoy that culture. And I think it's a good idea to open up to others the way I see it. I mean, even when Japanese people tell me I should wear a kimono one day, that shocks me because, you know, you always see the SJW saying, oh, if you wear a kimono, that's uh, that's disrespectful. It's so weird because in Japan, people want you to wear it because they want you to learn about their culture. I think that's the most respectful way is learning about one another. Of course, if you wear a kimono in an insulting way, that's offending Japanese culture. And Japanese people will seriously get offended. But if a Japanese person tells you to wear a kimono and knows how to wear a kimono properly, that's how you respect their culture. But anyway, guys, I don't want this video to be as long as it is. I just want to talk about my own experience, okay? And I hope a lot of Hispanics and Latinos do consider Japan an uh, opportunity to travel to, an opportunity to explore a new culture, to see something different entirely. And trust me, a lot of you guys will now regret it. Anyway, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.